Hello friends. I'm going to paint another little four by four by an inch and a half deep painting. It's going to be a chickadee. I've already painted the canvas white just to get, I don't really like painting on top of the gesso. It smooths it out with the white paint and it gives it a good base. Sometimes I paint instead of white, I paint a color in the background. And then as always, I write the word love on below every painting or on every canvas before I start painting. And then I'm showing you my palette. Uh, the deep blue is a Prussian blue. I've mixed it with some uh, Naples yellow and I think some gray to mute it out. And I'm just going to have sort of a sunny background. It's a little half inch filbert brush. And I'm just having fun playing here. Um, if you would, leave a comment and let me know if you like the real-time paintings, uh, this one's going to jump ahead because I just filmed it in section. It's about 22 minutes, um, but the actual painting probably took me maybe three hours to do. The white is titanium white. I use heavy body uh, Liquitex acrylics. I really like them. Um, I love the big caps because you can stand them on the cap so the paint stays uh, towards the end and uh, the caps are easy to get off. So now I've got my chickadee image transferred onto the canvas and the background's painted. I like it when the image goes over the sides a little bit. So some of the sunflower petals and the chickadee tail. Oh, there I'm showing you what I drew out. And then I scribbled on the back of it with some black charcoal and then taped it to the top of that canvas and then used a ballpoint pen to transfer that charcoal onto the canvas. I don't know if you guys did that when you're in school. It's sort of like cheap transfer carbon paper if you're old enough to remember that sort of thing you can buy artist uh, transfer paper I think Sorel is a brand that you can get I just make my own so this is a little knife brush um, I'm just kind of thinking about where my highlights are going to be and then where some of the shadows are going to be I really appreciate you guys helping me. The last chick chickadee painting I did, you guys helped me pick the background color. Um, overwhelmingly, you guys wanted the muted teal color, muted aqua color. It turned out great. And then a lot of you entered in on my Facebook page to win it. I gave one of them away. That was really fun too. So if you're an efficient artist, you might like have the gray in your brush and then put that gray everywhere you think you might like it. Um, I don't always clean off my brush in between changing colors there. I just grab some white. Um, but I tend to paint in sections so I can kind of see how things are coming along. Oh, somebody asked me on Instagram the other day how long I've been an artist. Um, I've been licensing, licensing my art for five or six years. Um, I've been selling in galleries for a couple years. But really, I'm just like a mini artist where I've been an artist all my life. So here we jump forward. Um, got quite a bit of the chickadee done. As I've mentioned in other paintings, I usually do two layers. So that's the first layer of the chickadee. Um, I'm using a Naples yellow, so it'll be softer. I'm pretty much using that right out of the tube. Oh, and then that's a little, oh, I think it used to be a flat brush. Bright brushes and flat brushes are pretty much the same. Uh, one just has longer bristles than the other. But that one I've been using so much, it's almost, like stubby. <laughs> I've scrubbed and paint with it so much that it's worn down. That's why I like it. Some artists say you should get expensive brushes, expensive paints. You know, I kind of just do a little bit of both. I guess I really have the expensive paints. I like the professional level paints. Um, but brushes... I'm kind of hard on them, so sometimes I buy cheap ones, sometimes I buy really nice ones. Um, 
I think you can make just about any of them work. You definitely want brushes for acrylic painting. You don't want one that's going to suck, suck up a whole bunch of paint in your brush. Be too hard to paint with. I think this one's a, a cheaper brush. I got it at Michael's. It might be a Royal Langnickel. I tend to buy those. So here I'm being a little more efficient. I'm actually looking to see where I might want that color and putting it down. So after I said I paint in sections, I'm kind of not doing that right here. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, thank you guys so much. So many of you have entered this, the giveaways I do. I usually give away a little 4x4 painting like this. Um, you've purchased them. That helps so much. Um, your support just means so much to me. I just want to say thank you. Oh, I forgot to mention, I mixed a little raw sienna in with that Naples yellow to get that sort of rusty color. And now this is just Naples yellow and white. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of thinking that the light's going to be on the cheek and the chest of the chickadee and then also at the top of the um, sunflower petals here. This is a little knife brush. It's probably an eighth inch wide at the base of the bristles and then it comes to a knife point. You could also use an angle brush. Sometimes I just use the brushes that are handy, even though I have a jar full of them. Just adding some highlights, seeing how I like it. So the paint blobs on my palette, that um, burnt sienna, it's the ready rust, rusty color. Sometimes I put out more paint than that because it just lasts longer. It'll keep the moisture better. When you just put out a little teeny bit of paint, it dries quicker. Even though I really didn't need even that much of the burnt sienna. I just thought, well, you want to, I mean, a painting isn't done in just five minutes, so you want to keep it moist. I also mist my paints with a really fine little spray bottle. Um, that helps. You could mix in some matte medium or some gel glass medium, but I don't always want to do that because then it makes the color even more transparent. Um, yellows tend to be transparent. Uh, black is not. The blues tend to not be. So if you want a transparent blue, then you mix in some medium, but... For the most part, I don't want that. If you guys want to put in the comments, let me know, like if you're a fan of turtles, let me know that you want me to paint turtles or you like landscapes. I've done some landscapes. I have a pretty one. Um, called, I think it's called Spring Rain. I can't even remember what it's called. Um, just let me know what you like to see artists paint. Or even what your favorite animal is. Now I'm using a combination of Hooker's Green mixed with the Naples Yellow so that it ties the two colors together and it warms up the Hooker's Green color. And then I think I might have put in a little burnt sienna. So that color I'm grabbing right there is the color I'm primarily using. 
I might have added a little burnt sienna to that to mute it out a little bit because red and green are opposite the color wheel, they're complements. And so if you mix them together, it grays them out, mutes them down. I was thinking I should paint some cardinals. I'm gonna paint one more chickadee, I think. So I have four of them. Um, that way I have four in my online gallery and I can send the four to my agent. That tends to work well for licensing. And then I think next, after I finish my pineapple, oh, and I wanna do a cactus. <laughs> I always have a long to-do to -do list of things I wanna paint. Um, but I definitely wanna get some cardinals in. But if you like another bird better, let me know. Uh, my dad has a cedar wax wing I painted, which I really like those, but I don't know if they're as, they're as popular with most people. I'm still using that knife brush. Just for more control. You could use a bigger brush. Alrighty, making some progress. Gonna work on the stem. I thought I might mention, so if you wanted brighter yellow petals, I wanted the bird to definitely come forward more and be more important, be brighter. Um, you would either paint the petals white because I had the blue background everywhere or not paint the blue background underneath this flower. Um, that would make the yellows pop more. Of course, you don't use a Naples yellow. You use like a cad medium yellow or something, which is much brighter. But I definitely wanted the chickadee here to stand out more. I'm given the branch or the stem, I guess it'd be a stem. It's not a branch. A little bit of a highlight. So here I just sped up the video, I think it's four times as fast. Cause I'm just blending and playing a little bit and then I go back and blend some more. So I thought maybe right here we could just speed it up a smidge. Now I'm pretty happy with the stem. I'm going to put in the leaf. Getting close to having that first layer done. Now I'm thinking about putting in some of the darkest greens and seeing how that looks with the chickadee. So I slowed the video back down a little bit. I'm trying to keep in mind how much time you wanna spend watching. Please, please, please let me know what you like and don't like in the comments. That helps me improve. Oh, I'm just smoothing out the edge there. I must've got it a little, a little rough when I painted in that dark green. I think on this one, I didn't film as much of the second layer. I don't know that I put in a, t a ton of paint on the second layer. Because the chickadee's got, he looks done. He's got nice whites, nice contrast. I have other painting uh, videos on YouTube that you might like. Um, I've been chalking my driveway and sidewalk. Once a week, I started um, when my city of Omaha was doing it for kids. A lot of people were home walking during the pandemic. A lot more people are back to work now. Um, but I'm still chalking. So I think I'm on 13 or 14 now. Dep of course, it depends on when you watch this video. There could be a lot more. Those are kind of fun to watch. They're quick, quick little videos. And if there's something else you'd like to see me film or talk about, let me know.
Okay, yeah, we've jumped ahead here. And it's looking pretty done. I've added some little green wispies between the back petals. Um, just kind of seeing what I like and what I don't like here. Oh, people ask how long a painting like this takes me. Um, I haven't timed myself in a while, but probably three hours. And I don't paint it in one sitting. I usually paint some, you know, get a phone call, need to stop. Um, stuff like that happens. Or I may paint for, you know, an hour in the morning, and then I work on another painting until lunch, and then... You know, do some graphic design work in the afternoon, that kind of thing. All right, guys, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. We're about done here. Follow me on Facebook, at Annie Tro. It's the same on Instagram. I do giveaways. Um, I announce what's going on. I love connecting with all of you. It really, really makes my day. I spend a lot of time alone painting, which I love, but I also love um, getting a chance to connect with the people who enjoy watching these. 